morning. Good morning. So uh, last time I spoke, there were some real uh, gremlins going on with the microphone, but it seems good today, right? So this is great. Technology is so good. I think um, it's such a nice breeze outside. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang out out here. <laughs> if that's not okay, go ahead and put your hand up right now. <laughs> I don't see any hands. <laughs> so I'll just I'll just hang out. It's really nice. Um, you know, a while back I was gonna get some water actually. A while back I got to uh, I got to travel to Ephesus, which was a really great experience. And one of the amazing things is the theater in Ephesus, and you can read parts of uh, Acts talk about the theater in Ephesus. That's where the uh, riots happened, and Paul was Paul was involved with that. People were upset with what Paul was talking about. And at the theater in Ephesus, the big theater can hold about about twenty four or twenty five thousand people, and it's pretty amazing. Hi, hi, nice to see you. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. back in those times, a theater can hold twenty five thousand people. And there's no microphones, there's no screens, there's no TVs, there's nothing like that. And uh, it, it really, it's a pretty amazing thing. And, and I feel like, wow, we have all this technology now. But the cool thing about Ephesus is the theater, you've seen these old amphitheaters, they're, they're designed in this kind of shape, this like half circle kind of shape. And if you stand right in the right spot, right in the middle, it's the weirdest thing. It's this enormous theater of 25,000 people. And if you stand in the right spot and you start to talk, you can hear your own voice kind of echoing back at you. And so what we had is we had some of our some of our people in our group. We went to the very very top, the very top uh, seats, the very top of the theater, the nosebleed seats. And someone else would stand in the front and talk. And you couldn't whisper down there, but if you talked in a pretty normal, you know, a little bit louder voice, you can easily be heard at the very top seats. And I feel like wow, that's that's really cool, you know. But we don't have to do that now, do we? In fact, I don't even need to be here. I thought about just sitting at home and just, just typing up uh, on the screen behind me. And, you know, we could just do it like that, and I wouldn't even have to, uh, to put pants on or anything. So <laughs> this, is, uh, this is something I think we need to explore. We have this technology, you know. I, I don't need to be here. You don't, you don't have to look at me. So, but there's a reason, isn't there? There's a reason that I'm here. There's a reason that you're here. And that's one of the things. When I'm, uh, when I'm here at church, many, many Sundays, I, I ask myself, I ask myself, why am I here? Like, why am I actually here? And I think it's a good question to ask. Um, today, like, like Michael was talking about, I want to talk a little bit, we're going to talk about joy, just like we've been talking about. And I want to talk about something, something that's been in my mind about, about how joy can, can kind of be kind of sucked out of your life a little bit. And some of the things that I've been thinking about of, of how maybe we can get that back. Um, first off, though, I want to talk a little bit about Facebook. Who likes Facebook? Yeah, young people. Yeah. Do you guys like Facebook? Don't be ashamed. <laughs> how, many, how many friends do you have? MySpace. How many friends do you have on Facebook? 16. <laughs> you got me beat. I think my mom's my friend, and that's about it. Do you have any of those friends, though, that it's like... They have like 300 something friends or 700 something friends. Do you know anyone like that? So they must be really happy people, huh? They're super happy because they have so many friends on Facebook, right? Well, Facebook is a weird thing. So for, for anyone older than me, you probably have no idea what Facebook is. So I'm about 20 now. Um, <laughs> I just had a birthday, that's funny. So, you know, for the, for the elderly people here, um, you know, 22 and older, basically. Let me let me explain. On Facebook, on Facebook, it's like an online message board, kind of, where I can go and post things about myself. I can post, uh, you know, how I'm feeling, what I've eaten that day. You know, most of you most of you know this, and then other people can come and see what I've posted. Right? Twitter is kind of similar. I've heard. Too old. But on Facebook, you go and you post things. Usually, you post what you you post what you ate that day. Something like what you're listening to. What else do people post? Yeah, what do you post, Marty? Pictures of buildings. Pictures of buildings. That, that sounds very believable. <laughs> so then, after you post something, there's these, there's these responses. And, uh, and actually, this is something that's changing right now because there's been some problems. But traditionally, the response would be a little button that says like, and it's got a little thumbs up. And so, if someone posts something, and you see it, you can hit the like button. 
And I'm not sure how much Facebook thought this through when they first implemented this, this system. Sometimes it works really well. You know, Mike will come on and say, hey, I just, I just got a new job, I just, you know, whatever. And people are like, that's awesome, I like that. But then there's these other times, have you guys seen these ones where, where someone posts something and then someone hits like and it's super, super awkward? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the reason is because the like button really kind of means, it really means like, I've seen what you posted, I've seen what you've said, and I acknowledge that. But the symbol for it is a little thumbs up and a like. So here's a couple that I found. Super awkward. So the first one says, Brother Tim went to be with the Lord on Tuesday. Arrangements will be announced soon for his funeral. You got 40 likes. <laughs> the next one says, how does one dispose of a dead kitten? I don't know. It got a like, though. It got a thumbs up. <laughs> Another one says, uh, there's a, a younger person, I assume. It says, I'm single again. And then 33 friends came back with a thumbs up and they said, hey, good for you. <laughs> and then the original poster followed up later and said, actually, my boyfriend got hit by a car. Yeah, that's awkward. So I fell into a poison ivy bush today. That got, that got a lot of thumbs up, too. Um, this would not, maybe not be around here, but maybe back in like San Bernardino area, kind of where, where I'm living. It says, oh, people down the street are shooting at each other. And that got a couple thumbs up. Which really, you know, it means I acknowledge that. I saw your post, but the symbol is a thumbs up. And the last one says, it's not an emergency yet, but could someone tell me in the next 30 seconds how to put out a grease fire? <laughs> that would be great. Well, this post got seven thumbs up. And then two hours later, a response from a friend that said, use baking soda. And then, um, are, you now, are you now a burn victim? <laughs> and then the original poster finally came back and said, oh, it's okay. The fire went out when I was Googling grease fire. <laughs> so social media, social media has taken off in, in popularity, it's taken off, but sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't allow us to relate with each other the way that we are supposed to relate with each other, right? Can we agree with that? Yeah. Let me ask you this, let me ask you. Um, think about a time, think about a time, and for some of us, you know, it'll, it'll be a lot more thinking because we're a little bit older and then for other people a lot more thinking. So think about a time when, and not just one point, but just kind of a, a time period or, or an average of times when you felt the most joy in your life. Think about that for a minute. Did that experience, did it involve another person? Often, right? Often. When I thought of the ones for myself, many of them, many of my, my happiest, most joyful times, they involved other people. And the ones that didn't involve other people, I realized later, there were some where I was alone. Maybe I was out, I was out hiking or camping or something, and it was just this really awesome experience. And I realized, you know, but I still wasn't totally alone, right? because I was, I was actually spending time with God. And so, the times in my life where I felt the most alone, like really alone, those were not the times in my life where I felt the most joy. Is that, is that pretty normal? I think so. So I have a scripture this morning. Open uh, your Bibles if you have them, to uh, 2 John. It's a little one back in the back. Second John chapter one verse twelve. So Second John chapter one verse twelve. We'll look at that and uh, and see what it says. Um, and I have here. John writes, "I have much to text to you, but I do not wish to use thumbs and screens. Instead, I hope I can visit you and talk with you face to face, so our joy may be complete." Uh, John did write that. That's actually from my friend John Cooper, though. Um, that's not from the, the book of John. The book of John says, I have much to write to you, but I do not wish to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. It's a very simple verse. It's very small. And it's, it's a very simple message, I think. And I really appreciate this. My friend John and I, we were talking about this, and that's actually what he wrote to me. He said, uh, you know, today you could, you could easily make it. I have, I have much to, to talk 
I have much to text to you, but I do not wish to use thumbs and screens. And it's, it's very applicable. So, as I've thought about this, you know, I have, to, I have to admit, I'm not a huge Facebook fan. I have a Facebook page. I update it about once a year, I think. It, maybe, maybe, but about once a year. I do have a Facebook page, um, and I think that it's useful for some things. But Facebook has really taken off, hasn't it? Facebook, social media, all of these things. I think there's a, a, a purpose for that. I think there's a reason. And the reason is, I really think, I think this speaks to the fact that people People are made to be social. I think that's why Facebook and Twitter and what was it? Insta, Insta Snap, Snapgram. Yeah, those. I think that's why they're so popular. People, people are made to be social. It does get harder as you get older. That's something I've I've started to learn. But I think in general, people are made to be social. Um, but at the same time, we can we can abuse that if we don't do it the right way. And what I was thinking is, you know, Facebook and all the social media, it's, it's, it can be a good thing, right? And it's not necessarily, it's not inherently a bad thing. There's some things I think, they're just bad, you know? If, if you come and, and kick me in the leg, I don't think that's a good thing, I think that's just bad. But there's these other things that we can talk about that are part of our lives, like, like money, sometimes relationships, um, you know, jobs and things like that. These are not inherently bad things, but they can be used, they can be abused, and used for the wrong purpose, right? So I think the social media is a little bit like this too. I think that it's easy for us, because of the, the convenience, it's easy for us to get pulled in and to misuse some of these things and establish bad habits. Just like, just like it's easy to get pulled into having a lot of money and make bad habits because of that. But I do think, I do think we're made to connect and I think that social media can serve that purpose when it's used correctly. But I also think that we have to be careful. Um, I thought about when I, was, when I was preparing this, I thought of uh, a couple of sayings. And I wonder, I think everyone here has probably heard this before. But you've heard the saying, distance makes the heart grow fonder, right? <coughs> has everyone heard that before? Okay, I'm looking at the young, young ones here too. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. And it's one of these great things that people say, like, if you and your wife or you and your parents have to be separated for a long time, they're like, oh, don't worry. Distance will, will make you even like more, you know, more fond of each other. Um, that's great, right? Yeah, that's, that's what I asked myself. I thought, is that really a good thing? Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Is that a good thing? Because I thought, well, if that's true, and if that's a good thing, then why can't you say that hunger makes the stomach grumble louder? <laughs> awesome. Insomnia makes the pillow softer. <coughs> Headaches make the pills work better. Droughts make the water taste better. And baldness makes a man shine brighter. <laughs> now that last one, it could be good, right? So that's what say. But so, you know, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, is this really, is this, I mean, number one, is it true? That's a whole different topic. But even if it is true, is it a good thing? I'm not sure it really is a good thing. I believe, like John wrote, both Johns, my friend and, and John wrote, I believe that we are made to meet face to face. I think that's one of the reasons we're here today. That's one of the reasons that I'm standing up here and you're sitting down there and we're all here. We, we used our gas money, we used our time, we woke up early, we, we got our kids ready, kicking and screaming, we made our hair beautiful like mine. And we're here to meet face to face. Do we not have ways that we can sit at home and talk to each other? Do we not have YouTube that you could sit there and I could make a little video sitting at my kitchen table while I'm eating breakfast talking about the exact same things we're talking about now and you could just go watch it whenever you have a chance? We have that. We have that ability. But we're still here, aren't we? And there's a reason we're here. I believe that people need to meet face to face. And like I said earlier, I do think this gets a little bit harder as you get older. Um, especially for men, right guys? I don't know, maybe not you guys, maybe not Marty's. But I think for some guys that are not Marty, this gets harder as you get older. When you're a kid, I, you know, I've been thinking a lot, when, when you're younger, you end up making all these friends and it's super easy to make friends, right? Do you guys remember that? Like your best friends growing up and you do everything together and you're always racing each other, running or on, on bikes or something. And you just spend so much time together. And then as you get older, suddenly, suddenly the, those things kind of go away. 
and you start to realize that the best friends you ever made were all from when you were younger. You know, when I think back, many times the best friends I made were all pretty much from high school or college or younger than that. And so it does get harder if we're not intentional. If we're not intentional about it, it gets harder as we get older. But I really believe, I believe that we are made to meet face to face. And so what I want to talk about uh, real quickly is, I think there's two aspects to this. The first one is that I believe that we're made to meet face to face with people. And I also believe that we're made to meet face to face with God. And I think that in our, in our, in our society today, with some of the opportunities that we have, we don't always do that anymore. And sometimes we start to make habits to where we're not, we're not meeting face to face because, you know, it's easier. It's easier not to sometimes. It's easier just to send an email or send a text or, send, or, or, or use a phone call or something like that. You know, I, I got to admit, I really like text. I'm a, uh, I'm a texting guy, but uh, I don't like phone calls. That's just, that's like, that's out of my comfort level there. The texts are great. And the great thing about text is that, is that I don't, I don't really need you to do anything. I can just tell you what I want to tell you, and then you have to deal with it after that. <laughs> and you have to respond. So I love text. Texts are really, really convenient, really easy. And, um, and I'll text you back all day long. Luckily in the mountains where we live, we live up in Big Bear, we don't usually have a signal, so I don't have to deal with this very much. I basically just won't respond no matter how you try to contact me. Um, but I do love text. I think, though, I think that we have to meet each other face to face. And I think that as we fall into traps, as we fall into traps of using convenience and just sending little messages and things like that, whereas used to, used to, we would have had to see each other to tell each other what we wanted to say. But now we don't have to do that. And as we fall into some of these traps, I think that it has, it has pulled us away from each other in some ways. As individuals and as a church body, and I also think as Christians with God, I think that habits can kind of fall, fall into our faith as well. Um, I wanted to show uh, a couple pictures real fast, so we'll have a chance. There's a, oh, it's a little bit right. Um, so this is just one picture. It doesn't matter if you can see the faces, but there's basically a, a bridge here, some mountains in the back, and there's a, there's a lot of people on the bridge. Um, I can't remember how many people went this time, but somewhere around 50, 50 to 60 was pretty average. Sometimes we had up to 70 or 80. This is uh, one of the last retreats that, that my wife Alex and I ever got to go on in China before we came back to America to go to grad school. So this is one of the very last retreats, and these are people from three different congregations that were started in, in Beijing. Um, there was one, one congregation that started a long time ago, and then that congregation kind of uh, decided, you know, let's, let's go across the city and start another one. So they did. They went over there and started another one, and my wife Alex was kind of part of that group. And then later on, another congregation was started down in the South Park, and we were trying to spread out. And so this, is, uh, this represents the three, the three congregations. There's another picture that might show up a little bit better. And so um, this is most of the people, but of course you can't have everyone show up all the time. These are most of the people from the three congregations at the churches in Beijing. And what I wanted to tell you about this picture is that these people, most of them, most of them were not Christians a couple years before this picture was taken. And for the, I think for the most part, these are all Christians now. Maybe there's one or two people that are just starting to come and not Christians yet. But basically, these are all Christians now. Most of them were not. There's a couple that had been Christians uh, younger, and and they just found our church or found our church and started coming. But most of these people were not Christians. Probably three to four years before this picture was taken. Okay. And this was not because of me. Let me tell you right now. This this is not like oh I saved all these people. No no no. Trust me, definitely not. I probably did, I did more harm than good. I think. But the point is, the point is, all of these people, all of them, came to know Jesus because they met with someone who was a Christian, someone who was a believer. All of them. Many of them, many of these people um, read with Heather, who's the children's minister here now, and you'll remember Rod Knox. Rod Knox is helping out with the new church. And so Heather and Rod Knox came over with LST, uh, which Scott Lambert is, is going to work with. And many of these people, many of these people, they sat down with LST. And what LST does basically is they take the Bible and they have a workbook and they kind of work through teaching people English using the Bible. And people in China, people in China are dying to learn English because it can really help them get better jobs, it can help them in many, many ways. So LST is a huge opportunity here. So Heather and Rod Knox came, Heather came a couple times, and read with, with a good number of these people who later became Christians after more and more study. 
But the point is, these people are not here today. They're not here in this picture and worshiping this morning in China because someone dropped flyers out of an airplane that said, Jesus saves. Or because someone sent them a text message that says, Jesus is the Lord, you should follow him. That's, that's not why these people came. These people came because, because they met someone face to face. They got to know people. And because they got to see Jesus in their lives. And so if we take that away, if we take that away, this, this interaction, this face to face, we, we lose. We lose being able to see Jesus in each other. Being able to bless each other. And people like this maybe lose the opportunity to get to know who you are as a Christian. We're made to meet face to face. We can supplement with social media. We can, we can supplement with phone calls. My friend John Cooper, I mentioned a minute ago, he lives in Texas. I can't, I can't go meet him face to face. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing that I can pick up the phone and talk to him. And that's a great thing. And, and there's, other, there's other things even from a missional perspective that sometimes you can't go and meet these people. Maybe, maybe you can do some kind of correspondence with them and write back and forth because you can't be there. That's a great thing. Those are great supplements. But the goal, the real goal is we need to be face to face. That's who we are. I have a couple examples. A couple examples when when uh, we we look in the Bible of when God came to meet people, showing that even God, God comes and we meet him face to face. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were in the garden. And do you remember? They were in the garden, and God would come, and they would meet him. And of course, uh, you know, we know in the Bible that it's it's difficult to see the face of God, and often God will, you know, he'll, he'll somewhat cover himself because it's just too much for people. But it's still the idea of being there face to face and meeting. So Adam and Eve experienced it. Um, Abraham, when when uh, Abraham was told that that they would be able to have children, um, angels came and met Abraham face to face. God could have just he could have sent an email. That's fine, but he didn't. You have Moses. Moses met God face to face in the burning bush. And also in the tabernacle later, remember, Moses would go and meet with God in the tent. And then when he would come out, and he'd be like glowing after he met God. Um, and also, I, I, I actually, I thought for a minute, we actually have a biblical example of an early, early text message. And it wasn't really successful, actually. Because Moses went and got the Ten Commandments. And it was like a text message he brought from God down to the people. And so that was like kind of the first text message or email, maybe it'd be an email. And then what happened to people, the people completely changed their lives and, and, and became super godly and followed all the Ten Commandments, right? Not really. I think the best example, the best example obviously is Jesus. Jesus came for a reason. Jesus came to meet us face to face. Everything Jesus told us when he was here, that could have been told in a different way. But part of the message was how it was delivered as well. So Jesus came. He met us face to face. And that's a huge part of the gospel. That's a huge example for us of, of being present with people. So this week, it's very simple. My, my, my message is very simple this week. I want us to think about, I want us to think about how how we can recover some of the joy in our lives, some of the, some of the awesome interactions that maybe we miss out on sometimes. And so I have two challenges for you. The first one is this week, and it depends on you know, how, you, how you interact with people, so maybe, maybe it's a little different for different people. But what I want is this week, instead of sending a message on Facebook to someone, or instead of sending a text message, or instead of sending a phone call that you're about to send, if you can go and meet that person, go meet that person. Invite them to lunch and spend some time together. Or maybe maybe in my situation with my friend in Texas, John, I can't meet him face to face, but I have a habit of only using text messages to talk with him. So for me this week, it's going to be calling him up on the phone and hearing each other's voices and having that a little bit closer to a face-to-face -face meeting. So that's the first challenge. The first challenge is substitute some kind of some kind of interaction where you're using a text message or you're using an email or you're using a Facebook message. Take that out and if possible, sacrifice the time and go meet that person face-to-face, -face, okay? And the second one, the second challenge is to meet God face-to-face. -face. 
at some point this week. So what I think happens and what I've started to see in my life is that just like the interactions that we can start to have with each other through, through email or through Facebook, I think that sometimes we start to do this with God as well. I started to realize sometimes when I pray, maybe a lot of times when I pray, it's actually a text message prayer. I'm, I'm sending God text message prayers because I just send it. And I, I don't need a reply from him. I just send it. And then, you know, and then later he can reply when he wants to. It's not a conversation. It's just a message that I'm sending to him. Or another way I thought of it um, for some of the, uh, the, the military guys here, I was thinking it's kind of like a sniper prayer. You know? You're just way back away. You're protected. And you just kind of shoot this thing off from far away. So I think that I see myself, and I see myself starting to have this habit of sending God text message prayers or email prayers where I just say what I want to say, but we're not really having a conversation. There's no back and forth. There's no two-way conversation going on. And one of the things that helped me think about this is uh, for one of the classes Alex and I are taking right now, we had the opportunity this week, actually not this week, it was a couple weeks ago, where we had to go for two hours completely alone with no one else around. So we had to find a place with no one else around. And for two hours, we had to just reflect and pray and be with God. And we weren't allowed to take phones or computers or anything like that. We could take a, a notebook, uh, which was great because I was able to uh, write prayers. I really like to, to write prayers. And so this was a really great experience of just sitting for two hours and being with God. And suddenly I felt like it's a little bit, a little bit more of a two-way conversation than my normal email and text message prayers that I send to God. Because I took the time to stop and to wait and to listen. And then I had things that were coming into my head, thoughts that I was having, feelings that I was having, that I felt like were, were, were guiding me and were leading me. So I don't know how that would look for each of you. Maybe each person has a different way. Some people, some people like to sit there and paint painting about something they're feeling about their faith. Some people, like maybe myself, like to sit and write, write prayers. Maybe someone else, go for, go for a 10-mile run and, and be with God during that time. Um, so it's different for each of you, but that's my challenge is to be with God this week, to allow yourself to have that extra time, that extra time where you're not rushing around and you have to send a text message prayer to God. So give yourself the extra time to where you can wait and hear a response. And then also replace, replace some kind of media with an actual face-to-face -face meeting with someone in your life this week. Pray with me. Dear God, we, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here, to be together, God. To, to have the joy, the amazing joy of worshiping together, of, of singing these songs, of praying together, of hearing each other's prayers, God, of uh, sharing the communion together and remembering you. God, we thank you so much for allowing us to be together here. We pray that you will, you will bring the people here every week and that you will bring us back so that we can be with you and we can be with one another. God, we pray that you will make us people who are, who are diligent and are intentional about, about our relationships and not just use convenient means of communication but, but to realize the value of being together of seeing each other of eating together God. And I pray also that you will give us many times to be with you and to, to wait for responses from you and not just send off our, our, our wish lists and some of our text message prayers that we do please uh, bless us this week bless us with the joy the joy of relationships the joy of being with you. We thank you so much for this church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand.